Welcome! My name is Gabrielle Javier Cerulli and I am the author of this new awesome book, Art Journal Your Archetypes. And I have a very special guest who is inside this book, Mary Beth Shaw of Stencil Girl Products. Hi, Mary Beth! Hi, Gabrielle! How are you? <laughs> Good! Can you tell the viewers uh, a little more about what you do? I can. I am a mixed media artist, also the founder of Stencil Girl Products, and I <laughs> love to art journal, and I get all excited about archetypes. I was thrilled to be part of your book, and because it's something I really believe in. Well, yeah, that's a good question. Why were you, because I'm sure you get asked a lot of things to collaborate or be part of. What was the draw to be part of this book? Well, I learned a little bit about archetypes when I lived out in California and um, had some friends out there that kind of been, got me involved in this little group and we explored archetypes through studying the Carolyn Mace book about okay. um, finding your archetypes. I can't, Soul Contract, is that the That's one? That's it. Yeah, yeah, or something like that. Yes, I think it's Sacred soul. Contract. Sacred That's Contract. It. Sacred Contract, yes, and I... I studied that book within this little group, and we actually, we made little index cards that were collaged to represent all of our archetypes. It was really a wonderful process, and then when I found out you were writing a book that joined up archetypes and art journaling and mixed media, I was just, I had to be part of it. Right, the, thank you. I'm so excited that you did. Can you actually talk a little bit about your world before Stencil Girl? Because I don't know if a lot of people know that there was a life before Stencil Girl. That yeah, you were always you were an artist. A crazy one. Yeah, you're an artist um, prior. Right. I was in the insurance industry. I was okay. an insurance executive for about eighteen years. I um, handled products liability litigation. Right. It was like the other side of my brain. And um, then when I turned forty, I really felt like I had to be involved in something more meaningful and so I kind of went on the self-exploration and ultimately quit my corporate job and my art started spilling out in many ways and I became an exhibiting artist at first and did outdoor art fairs around the country and then I started becoming a teacher at workshops and wrote a book then started Stencil Girl, wrote another book, and it's just been a whirlwind since then. And that is such an inspirational story because a lot of people think, 40, you, you can't, you're stuck, right? Or this is only hobby, but this you're, you're living proof that it can be. Yeah, it was just the beginning for me. Yeah. I mean, it was like, I think for me, maybe I was a late bloomer, but it took me until 40 till I felt like I was in my own skin. And honestly, for me, it feels like it's getting older or getting better the older I get. Right. I'm 56 now, and it's just like, I don't know. <laughs> I just feel more comfortable in my own skin, more comfortable than I have in my whole life. So, right. Oh. Yeah. Um, so can we see? Uh, do you have any art journal of your art journals? I do. By? I do. I, um, well, this is the journal I'm using right now in 2016, and I started it in the beginning of the year, 2016. You I can love see it. And it is already almost filled up. There's just a few white pages at the end. Nice. And it's like, I can't believe I've been journaling so much. But it's often, you know, the only thing that I get um, time to do. So sorry about that. What That's are okay. the odds of me having a second phone call during this phone call, right? Pretty and high, probably, so as a busy gal. <laughs> try to find something that would be inspiring for you to look at. This is somewhat reminiscent of the piece, one of the pieces I did for your book where I was using um, this face stencil. And I was, really this just started out as kind of process work, layering and painting and layering and painting, collage and stencils. And then I have those words in there. Find a way. Go home. I don't know if you can see them up here. Yeah. But they're just words out of um, vintage text where I just gesso out all around, and I find the words that I like, and then I, I keep them in a you know, little group of collage elements. Gotcha. And, um, it was really nice to pull these out. It was just like they really meant something to me the day that I did this. Very cool. It's like blackout poetry. It is, exactly. I love 
love that. Um, you know, seeing that poetry. It's so cool. Yeah, but I've never done it as, like, to have a little stash. That makes so much sense now. Well, you know, it's a fun way to work because if you are having one of those days where you're just not inclined to do anything uber artistic, I just pull some old kind of grody looking vintage pages, get my gesso and a little brush, and I just paint over everything except for the words I like, and I just leave them exposed, and they don't have to make any sense, gotcha. and then I just do a whole sheet, throw it in a little bin, do Fine. another sheet, throw it in a bin, and then pull it out, and... Um, I find some incredibly insightful things come up. Here's another spread that I've Ooh. done this year. Ooh. Those and are cool. Of course, using stencils and words and all of the things that I love. Yes, and you yeah. you definitely have a color scheme going on lately. Oh, yeah, I do. I'm getting back to some of my earthy colors. Oh, here's some new colors for you, Gabrielle. Oh. How's that? That's out of my color box, for sure. Yes, it is. Definitely. Um, but, you know, it's... Um, and this saying is a little um, thing from a poem that I read. And for a moment, I almost vanished. <gasps> Ooh. Isn't that profound? It is profound. I mean, it's just... It's a little... I think it's from a Mary Oliver poem. It was just a little little segment of the poem that's just like I write down these things that I like you know right and it's, that's what I, you have to do I mean especially with people who do art journaling we have all these little collections so I just want you guys to see and actually this might be Mary Beth's first time to see this there there she is in the book oh there, there is. she is and this is her page oh I really like that spread yeah and then I won't show you her other spread because I'll keep it a surprise. And then here's her archetypes. Some of the surprises were, when we did our session together, were storyteller, liberator, and detective. Of course, she's artist as well. But did you find any surprises or validations when we did our session together? I did. I did. I so distinctly remember that day because... It was a really moving session for me. It meant a lot to me to do the session with you. And I felt, I don't know, I felt really, um, you know, I was deeply committed to the idea, but I was very touched by what came out. And I've thought about it a lot. And here's the big surprise. Everybody, hold on. I wasn't a teacher. <laughs> now everybody's going to... Cancel your class or not show up, but uh, or like they're like what? <laughs> I know, and I was just I was so surprised. But then I started looking at it from different ways, and what was revealed seemed more on target to me. The fact that I was revealed as a liberator, because when I teach, that's one of the things that's very important to me is that. I show and share techniques and processes and so forth, and then hopefully get my students involved so that they can find their own voice throughout right. that process. Right. And, um, I mean, that's my ultimate goal. So I guess, yes, I am a liberator. That's really what I strive for. Right. So, folks, don't not uh, – definitely still go to all of Mary Beth's classes. It's <laughs> – but how she's going to approach it is, I mean, of course you'll learn technique, but there's not going to be heavy technique. You have to learn some technique, especially if you're using new materials, especially stencils. Um, but it's more of process-oriented than product-oriented. And you can even see in Mary Beth's journals, she, there's no way she planned for those pages to come out as they did. Absolutely. Uh, it's a total process. Right. And it's one where you just go along and you build your story, which is the other archetype, the storyteller. Right. And, right. you know, that should have been an obvious one to me through the years, but it wasn't. And, and it just came out and I was like, yeah, yeah, I get that. See, that yeah. is so incredibly uh, special to hear that to me uh, because... You know, folks in our world, we, you know, we go into um, self-realization or, or self-development or, you know, some personal development kind of things all the time. But to hear something new come up, like something 
fresh uh, is very exciting. It just it speaks to the work and it speaks to it needs to be out there more into the public so they get it. You know, yeah. now you have a new lexicon of how to describe yourself and yes. what your strengths are, your true strengths versus what you're trying to do. And you can tell if you're getting um, uh, burnt out that it, it, you might not be on the right path. I think so now you can uh, yeah I think that's true and I think recognizing the entrepreneur side of myself was important too because obviously I mean I obviously am an entrepreneur I started mm -hmm. my own business and um, yes but I think that as coming from corporate going to artists going to entrepreneur but retaining artists this was something I somehow thought like, oh my God, if I'm an entrepreneur, I can't be an artist or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I can be all of those things. Right. Right. That's very true. Um, why do you think art journaling and the archetype work marry so well together? Yes. Well, the art journal is a place to keep your sacred thoughts in the place where you can do the process and things come out of that that are sometimes unexpected and mm. sometimes quite meaningful. So to do the archetype work within the context of a journal makes perfect sense to me. This yeah. is the part that maybe you would just want to keep for yourself. Right. You know, maybe you'll share it, maybe you won't. But it's in this little book that is yours and you can work in these pages and you can also go back and revisit your pages which if you are working on wall hanging pieces you don't go back or add to it you know right. you like you complete the piece and then you just move forward so right. yeah oh here's another page that's a pretty one isn't it see how I'm using some purple these days it's wow. kind of a surprising thing that almost, is surprising you know? Wow. Yes, yeah. it, that is very interesting uh, because a lot of folks who are going to pick up this book are coming from the personal development world and some of them are uh -huh. coming from the art journaling world. And mm -hmm. so it's very exciting to me that the art journalers will now have new fodder for their art journal pages because sometimes it kind of gets stale or you're not sure what to do next because you've done enough of the same kind of technique. And for the personal development folks... Um, to try art journaling is very exciting to me. Um, yes. To give them um, a, a new way of expression. It's, um, okay. it's very exciting because it's, it's an inexpensive way. Um, you can test a lot of things uh, and nobody has to see it. And again, you're not using Canvas. But right, right. Well, and that's part of it too is it's the art journal – you know, first of all, you need to give yourself permission to create. That word permission just popped into my head while you mm. were speaking. And then the art journal, it's so accessible. It's inexpensive. It's like you buy a big canvas and it can be so um, scary. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just talking about a little page in a book here, you know. Just let loose and play. And so that's what I would tell the self-development people is don't worry so much, you know. Just yeah. get in there and play and things will be revealed and um, you will be surprised at what comes out, you know. Right, right. I mean. Yes. So what um, do you have coming up in the fall? What um, Any new stencils coming out? Any new classes? I do have new stencils. Well, you probably gathered by looking at some of my work that you know how I'm all about the grids, right? Yeah. So I've, um, I have a line of stencils I previously designed where you can make these different size squares and you can make plaids and all kinds of combinations. And so the thing I wanted to do was to make stencils that coordinated with them where instead of the little square parts, you got the little blocked in linear parts. And so I have three of these coming out very shortly in just a couple of weeks. Yay! And I'm quite excited about them. I, um, I've even, there were examples of them shown in here and what you looked at, I was playing with them a little bit. And here's an example of something that I've used um, oh. some of the little squares on. Oh, I'm so happy you have an example because um, I'm very excited to see those little tiny squares. And the new folks to art journaling and to stenciling might say, why would I want a stencil of squares? But this is why. It's for this layering. Uh, 
I mean, you can you can hand draw or hand paint those, but the stencil just makes the layering so much faster and easier. It really does, and I think it gets your brain out of the way because when you're just using paint and a sponge and moving fast and furious, your brain moves out of the way, and that really facilitates the art making process. Again, so um, that's all that process versus uh, you know product oriented Absolutely. pages. Absolutely, and I, I tell my students that all the time. It's like the problem is right between the ears. Mm. <laughs> You know, right. because really, as artists, I do think it's something that we need to um, do is to get the brain out of the way, and we're not inclined to do that. Right. Yeah. Well, especially if there's a fear factor or any kind of art trauma. A lot of times people come to me in my workshops, they just have, like, middle school art traumas, and, like, they were told that they're not the artist, and then it's like, like, like I'm going to tell them they're doing something wrong, and so they right. get this uh, anxiety, right. and so... right. Art journal is exactly. the perfect and I place. I had the whole middle school story myself. I had the eighth grade middle school story. In the eighth grade, I remember my teacher distinctly, Miss Seamer. She just took one of my pieces of art and said, You will never be an artist. That's awful. It just stopped me in my tracks. And um, you know what? I wasn't an artist for a while after that. I put away my visual art, and I started focusing on music, and I focused on my writing skills, my creative writing skills, and it took really pretty much until I was 40 for it to start spilling out again. You need to do an art journal page about Miss Seymour, or whatever her <laughs> name is. <laughs> I, isn't it funny? It's like, it just popped out. <laughs> See, she put you in one of those boxes. I Free. You're free. You're free from Miss Seymour's boxes. I'm free. Oh, that's an awful story. That makes me want to cry. I hope I never do that to anyone as a teacher. Gosh, no, no, because you're a liberator. Yeah, yeah. See, she's teacher and probably judge, meaning like there's a right way, there's a wrong way, there's the critique, there's the... Oh, that's interesting, yeah. Very interesting. Well, I think there's so much to be learned from your book, Gabrielle. I can't yeah. wait until I get my hands on a copy myself. Speaking of your copy, yes, you're going to also get a giveaway copy, which will you'll give away sometime. Probably around the beginning of October. Okay. Um, I will put something up on my Facebook page and let people know so they can check out my blog and so forth. But yes, I will give away a copy. Awesome. And do you have any live... Or new stencils coming out? Um, we have, I just wanted to show our group the, um, the Stencil Club stencils, which for this month are designed by Kathy Nichols, a wonderful artist out oh. of Charlotte, North Carolina. She did a little bohemian, kind of a little boho group. Love that. So the club is a really fun way to experience stencils and get introduced to some exclusive sets that are only for club members. If you're interested in joining Stencil Girls Monthly Stencil Club, uh, just go to their website and you will get a, an exclusive set of three stencils monthly, a 9x12, a 6x6, and a 4x4. And these are not sold on their website, they're just exclusive for the club members. You'll also get a tutorial video with that and an invitation to their secret Facebook group, all for $25 for a month. That's a great deal. Speaking of Facebook groups, after you uh, get the Art Journal Your Archetype book by yours truly, Gabrielle Javier Cerulli, feel free to join the Art Journal Your Archetypes Facebook page as well. Hope to see you there. Bye-bye.